I decided to use some adhesive to make sure this project sticks together. You know, I'm not sure this is like the second or third video we've watched that uses some sort of exterior wood adhesive when putting up a fence. This is a completely unnecessary step. I'm tired of looking at this temporary. So it looks like uh, a, a typical like agricultural entrance. Um, looks like a welded steel tube. So it's going to be beefy enough for whatever he decides to put on here. Curious about the fasteners he's gonna use. Uh, one and a half inch tall by one inch thick. It won't probably be one inch thick. So maybe like half inch or three quarter inch fasteners. Today's video is brought to you by Nationwide Industries, the Fence Pro's number one choice. And they're this Fence Pro's choice for a couple reasons. The most recent reason? Gate kits. They've paired their most popular hinges with their most popular latches in the most common post sizes to make it easier to grab and go. Also, as a consumer, it makes sure you know you've got the right hinge for the right latch. For example, if you've got a pool gate, they've got a pool gate kit just for you. It's got the cornerstone hinge in it, it's got the Trident 20 inch, both some of our most popular gate hinge hardwares. You've got a vinyl fence with five inch post, they got you covered. They've got their cornerstone two hinge. They've got the keystone traverse latch, which I love a lot. They've also got a handle in there. But if you have a vinyl fence with say a four inch post, they've got that too. All at Nationwide Industries. Check them out in the link below. All right guys, today's video is titled, I built the best fence entrance to surprise my wife, DIY fence builds. Now. DIYs can go either way, so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Just judging by the thumbnail, we're already off to a good start because we're using cedar. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I took native Oklahoma lumber and made it into this awesome entrance. It looks so good. Baby. Tried to surprise you. Oh, look at this. We got 200 cedar boards, and we're gonna make our front fence look good. All right, so the cool thing, is this is wood straight from Oklahoma, which is awesome. I've used cedar from Oklahoma before. This is the color it's gonna look. This is the color it is. All right guys, so it's Eastern Red Cedar. Technically a juniper, but Eastern Red Cedar is what it's known by. So he had said he got it directly from Oklahoma. This is actually the same type of wood, the same board that we use here in Southwest Missouri. We actually bring it up from a mill out of Arkansas. So I'm guessing it's a little bit of a regional variety. Eastern Red Cedar is great. Now the boards he's using, a little knotty, so they'll grade a little bit lower, but overall, great lumber. Now. When the sun hits it, it turns brown, but it starts out purple. What I wanna do is make it completely smooth so dirt and grime doesn't get stuck on there and it'll look really, really nice. Unfortunately, this color will be gone. It'll be more like this. Yeah, so I don't know about the smoothing it to keep off dirt and grime. I mean, it's probably a little bit extra of a step for a fence. It's gonna weather anyway. So it turns from purple or that, that heartwood color to the brown or some shade of brown, typically in two or three days. It changes pretty quickly depending on exposure. I highly recommend the Harbor Freight tools. This planer has probably had 2000 boards through it and it's held up great. I've been very impressed. All right, I did about half of them. They still need to go a little bit more. That was the first pass, some of them. Yeah, so the boards will have to go through probably two or three times. The boards are never perfectly flat. They're rough sawn, as is quite a lot of the cedar used in fencing. So sometimes they'll be cupped or they'll be concave or convex a little bit. They won't be perfectly straight. So you typically have to run them through two or three times just to get them perfect. Again, probably a little uh, far for a fence, but for DIY, I'm sure it's the look he's going for. Got pretty smooth, some didn't. I need them all the same. So it looks like we're not running them through a planer two or three times. Th this one went through once, or maybe he's cutting them to size and then running them through. I would just, if you're gonna do it, just do them all as long stock and then cut them. Once you commit to it, you've really got to plane them. I mean, just down completely. The problem is then you get into different thicknesses and boards from the road. It's likely not gonna be noticeable, but if you look down the fence, it will be noticeable that some are thicker than others. Making a jig made this so easy. Just put your boards where you need it. 
slide your lumber over, cut, and you're done. I didn't know exactly how many boards I needed and I hate doing math, so I went ahead and just laid everything out and measured what I knew the front space would be. Once I did that, I just layered up a couple of layers because I knew I was going to need to do this over and over. I'm tired of looking at this temporary. So it looks like uh, a, a typical like agricultural entrance. Uh, looks like a welded steel tube. So it's going to be beefy enough for whatever he decides to put on here. Fence. Let's change that. I ended up ripping down some two by fours into one and a half by one inch. I figured that was enough to screw my brackets into and be strong enough. Curious about the fasteners he's gonna use. Uh, one and a half inch tall by one inch thick. It won't probably be one inch thick. So maybe like half inch or three quarter inch fasteners. I'm not a welder and I don't know a lot of tricks and I'm working by myself. So I figured I'd hook these planks on and then I would hook my other board on top. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and hook these on and then put it up there. Trying to work smart, maybe? I don't know, I'm not a welder. With it's a pretty long span. I like what he's doing. So he's, he's putting up a wood backer. Now the wood backer looks like treated pine. For no more is what this project would have taken. You could have done cedar and kept the looks similar, but it'll all weather to gray unless he's going to stain it. Now, one thing I probably would have done a little bit differently, put a middle, put another bracket in the middle. That's a pretty long span uh, just for that top stringer to stay unsupported. But overall, it looks like he's off to a good start. Every project I do, I am learning a little bit more, but I'm still no professional. I decided to use some adhesive to make sure this project sticks together since it'll go through all of the elements. You know, I'm not sure. This is like the second or third video we've watched that uses some sort of exterior wood adhesive when putting up a fence. This is a completely unnecessary step. I mean, if, if it's peace of mind, then it's peace of mind. But I mean, depending on what fasteners you're using, I mean, he's using screws on these. So like, and it looks like a coated deck screw. So you wouldn't worry about this thing failing over time. The adhesive, it's a bit much. Looks like you might be using a, like a stapler. Uh, it didn't look like a finish nailer. Now, one thing you'll notice is he butted those boards up next to each other. We've seen some videos recently that we've reacted to where uh, they gap quite a lot. So Eastern Red Cedar, especially if you're using wood that's milled in the same environment. So I'm guessing he's there in Oklahoma using lumber milled in Oklahoma. You're not going to get a lot of gap. It will dry. It will lose some moisture content, but not nearly like if you were to bring a, a Western Red Cedar out of the Pacific Northwest into a drier, more arid environment, you could expect it to shrink quite a lot. So butting these boards up is the way to go. Ended up kicking myself in the butt over using this nailer. I knew putting the glue on would make it stick and I wouldn't even really need the nails. It's just gonna hold it temporary, but holy cow, I should have just started with screws. I end up going to screws later, but every three to four nails, it would jam. It was the pack of nails, I assume, because it was literally about every three to four and it would just jam. It was a nightmare, but like I always say, if you want something bad enough, you will make it happen. It looks like these are about a probably a five and a half or six inch wide picket. Um, if it if they're milled custom, they're likely a six inch true. You could skip the adhesive. You could do two nails in the top, two nails in the bottom. Uh, but like I said, judging by the gun, it looks like they might be some sort of brad nails. Maybe you'd want to use an actual finish nail. As I was doing the bottom, I learned. Go ahead and screw in about four boards first and get them lined up good. That way they stay in line. Then you can unscrew them and glue them later. Oh, still dealing with these nails, but I just kept going. It was pretty cool seeing it red, uh, kind of a purplish red color. And then as I work, it turned to brown. You guys will watch. It's pretty neat. 
I'm guessing the project was probably done over the over a weekend. Uh, like I said, my experience usually is two or three days to go. But this is a nice example of a fresh board right off the stack that's been shaded from UV exposure is going to be that purple color you see on the bottom. After two or three days of direct, direct exposure, like in this example, they're going to turn to that brown. Now, the nice thing about Eastern Res Heater too is you get that marbling effect. I love it. I think it gives a lot of character to the boards. An extra step would be to stain it. We prefer oil-based stains, but uh, stain it really makes makes that pop, <laughs> makes that color pop. And I'll say for some non-professionals, I think we don't do that bad of a job, even though I'm sure the comment section will be filled with people telling us we've done wrong. But hey, we're used to that. Well, that's just YouTube for you. Uh, the comment section can be kind of wild here regardless, but no, I think he's off to a great job or doing a great job. You can see I'm going to be working on the bottom here in a minute and the top goes easy because it's the same all the way across. The bottom, because the ground is unlevel, we had to cut every board different. I wish I would have had my chop saw, but I messed the cord up, so I had to use my little circular saw. So I will have to go back and do trim, even though I love the way it looks without it. Again, Dylan with this nail gun, oh, I'm not happy, but I'm a big believer in sweat equity. I do believe that when someone does something themselves, instead of paying for it, there's so much more pride when someone says they love the way it looks. I highly recommend anyone out there who's watching to try to go for anything you want. Do it yourself. Take a risk. It's 100% worth it. Oh, it looks good. Got half of it done. That looks so good. Try to surprise you. All right, y'all. So, what do y'all think of the fence? I think it came out really, really good. Guys, I think it came out great. I mean, I like the fact that you, I agree with him. DIY, if you can perform the task yourself, there's just greater pride in it. He took his time. Looks like he measured everything out. It fits really nicely. The bottom, I mean, I think you could probably bring it up half an inch to where you're not having to custom cut every picket. Might make it go a little bit faster. I don't think we're trying to make this fence dog tight. But overall, I think it looks really nice. I love the fact that he went with cedar. Eastern Red Cedar is an incredible look. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.